What up lads, this is going to be a quick priest tips video, the ultimate, ultimate priest tips video if you will, and it's going to be super useful for you if you're going to be leveling a priest on classic. Thank you father. So if you're going to be leveling on SOD in a couple of days, Yay! there's going to be a lot of juicy tips in here for you. And this is going to help you level quicker. I'm fastest, boy. It's going to be way less painful, maybe even enjoyable if you're crazy like me. You're crazy. You're going to get to 25 in SOD in no time and it will fly by and you'll be like, damn, going to make an ult. So, first of all, wands. So get yourself a lesser and greater magic wand as soon as you can. If you're on a fresh server, then definitely check out my short on how to get one on launch. It's going to be really, really helpful for you if you can do this. If not, then go to the auction house, go and grab them. There are a couple of silver. You can mail them from your uh, your main to, to your new priest character, or you can get a mate to come and bring them to you. That's going to be even better as you'll be able to get it on at level five, which is going to absolutely crush everything all the way to, to you know 11 or 12. Then it starts to slow down a little bit, and then you get the new wand on at level 13, and then you start crushing again all the way to like 16, even to 18. It's going to be better than your spells for the most part. Maybe Mind Blast overtakes them on DPS at higher levels, but until then... You can just send the wand and absolutely vibe. <laughs> yeah, boy. Wanding actually has an invisible cast bar. So if you're tanking a mob and it's hitting you, and you start wanding it, it's actually going to feel like it's a little bit slow. So it's weird. But if you actually shield yourself and then start wanding it, then the wand is going to hit just at the normal wand speed and you're going to do way more DPS to the mob. Yes, yeah, science! In addition to this, the shield also is protecting your inner fire from losing stacks. So you won't have to rebuff it as often. Make sure you're using a wand macro like this. This is gonna allow you to spam that button and it won't keep canceling the wand, which is gonna be handy as otherwise you'll just accidentally cancel it all the time. It's really annoying. Be super aware that there is a global cooldown on every single thing. Every button that you have gets a global cooldown after you cast a wand, after the wand shoots. And even on, on stuff that doesn't normally have a global cooldown, like pots and stuff like that. And this global cooldown is actually the exact same duration as the speed of the wand. So the faster your wand, the shorter this global cooldown will actually be. So there's a weird delay after you cast a spell before your wand can actually start shooting. And this happens whether or not it's an instant or a cast. So what you can actually do is a cast and then an instant. Make them land at the same time and then start your wand. And this way, the wand is going to start at the same time as it normally would after a cast, but you'll get that instant in there without actually losing any time. You can actually do some nice target swapping with wand. If you change target right before the wand actually shoots out, then the wand will carry on casting as if it was still on the same mob, and you won't have to recast it. So next up is going to be talents. So you can prioritize wand spec over spirit tap at the start, as soon as you hit level 10, uh, as long as you're getting that wand early on. Because you won't actually need the spirit tap while you're wanding, as you're not going to go oom um anyway. Secondly, don't get baited into shadow. There's a better spec all the way up to 40. And it makes use of all the talents in all three trees. You're just going to get all value basically all the way through. And it's going to increase your damage. It's going to make you more mana efficient. It's going to make you tankier. It's, it's just all good stuff. As opposed to if you go shadow, then you kind of have to get baited into taking loads of shitty talents to get the stuff you want. And the stuff you want isn't even that good until level 40. And then once you hit level 4, you can respec. But that's not going to be relevant in SOD until later. Next up is your skills. So make sure you're training new ranks of your damage skills as a priority. Especially after you get to level 18. And that means Pain, Mind Blast, Smite, Holy Fire. Just try and coincide any trips to the town with uh, with those levels. You know, 18, 20, 22. And there's actually an add-on that you can get that will tell you in the spell book when you're going to be getting a new spell. It's called What's Training. If you're getting really close to a level after finishing your quest route, you can just go and grind a few mobs, you know, get that level and uh, you'll be chilling. You're going to save yourself a bunch of time by getting those new spells. This next one's quite technical, but you can actually adjust your damage rotation on mobs depending on which spell you learned last, right? So if you've learned Smite latest, say you're level 22 or whatever, and you learned Smite the latest, your Smite is most likely going to be more damage than your Holy Fire at that point, more DPS. So you should mainly be using Smite over Holy Fire. There's actually an add-on that you can see which one of the two spells is going to be doing more DPS at any time. It's called Stat Weights Classic. This actually puts a number, this just puts the DPS number on, on the tooltip. And you can see exactly how much DPS any of your DPS spells are going to do. So you can also see if it's doing more than your wand. What you can do with this information is you can try and actually balance your mana with more spells. If you've got a lot of mana or less spells and more wanding if you have quite low mana. And this way you kind of... Stave off the drinking as long as you possibly can because that's lost time, right? The next is the five second rule. Now, understanding the five second rule is actually really important while leveling because this is where your mana is going to come from. And the five second rule is basically a mechanic where if you use mana, then for five seconds after you do that, your regen stops. Your spirit regen just stops, uh, barring a talent called meditation, which gives you a little bit back. But ignoring that, 
your regen is just fully stopped after you spend mana, right? So what that means is you should try to, if any casts you're gonna do, right, the damage spells or your shield, your inner fire rebuff, any of that good stuff, you should do it all in one clump, right? And then you spend the other clump just wanding, not casting anything. And this way you're not gonna reproc that five second rule and you're gonna regen all that mana in between. And this is really important. When you get your spirit tap up, you really wanna be outside of that five second rule for as long as possible during it because this is where you're gonna regen the most amount of mana. So the five second rule actually starts at the start of a channel like Mindflay. So by the end of the Mindflay channel, you only actually have to wait like two seconds before the five second rule actually finishes, right? And your mana is going to start ticking again. But for things like Smite, the five second rule starts at the end of the cast, right? This is when the mana gets spent, right? At the end of the cast. And this means you can try and actually time the Smite so that the Smite lands right off your mana ticks with the five second rule, right? And you can actually see this with an add-on called five second rule. Spells like Stone Form, Inner Focus, Desperate Prayer, they don't actually cost any mana. So none of them actually proc the five second rule. So what you can do, if you're getting a little bit low in between mobs, but you don't have to drink because your mana's still good, you can actually use like a Desperate Prayer or, a, or an Inner Focus heal to top yourself and it actually won't reproc the five second rule and you'll get away with it. And lastly, get yourself a good root add-on guide. Doesn't matter what it is, anything is better than nothing. Personally, I use Rested XP. It's free up till level 20, but if you want to keep using it and you actually like it, you can use code HYDRA for 5% off, and there's going to be a link for it in the description. Shamelessly plug yourself. And that's it, boys. That is all the basic and some somewhat more advanced priest tips that I've got for you for leveling. Hopefully they're useful. Maybe you knew some of them. Maybe there's some new ones in there that you didn't. It's quite a lot to put into practice, but it will make leveling a lot more fun for you as priests, I promise. If you like the video, please do give it a like, give it a subscribe. We are trying to grow the YouTube as much as possible lately, and... Going into SOD, we're going to be putting out a bunch more hype content like this. So keep your eyes peeled. If you want to see any more like this, it'll be coming your way soon.